Welcome to a new episode of the Let's Turn the Tide podcast. Our special series Voices of COP continues with an exceptional guest, Mohamed Ali Rashid Louta. He is the president and CEO of Dubai Chambers. He leads the organization's efforts to enhance business conditions in Dubai, promote global business growth, and advance the digital economy. Today, he will share with us the role of Dubai Chambers and more broadly the business community in COP and how he sees the future of business in the UAE. Welcome to the Let's Turn the Tide podcast, Mohamed Ali Rashid Luta. We are delighted to have you on this special series, Voices of COP. Welcome to Dubai Chamber. And Thank I you. hope we have a very exciting interview. Thank you for hosting us in, uh, in this beautiful space. So I want to ask you, you know, it's a very busy time right now with COP, you know, ahead of us. How are you doing? I think uh, we've, we've been very busy uh, with a lot of... Uh, growth in the economy of the city, adding to it the uh, hosting of COP28 that came right after uh, the success of Expo. So we're looking forward to having a successful COP28 and uh, really uh, shifting the mindset of uh, a lot of the business community players here towards sustainability. Yeah, it's, it's a very exciting times to be in Dubai, honestly, and the UAE. So I, I want to ask you, because you are leading one of Dubai's major economic development entities. How significant COP28 do you think is for the diversification of the UAE's economy? COP28 uh, specifically uh, is a very important event that will take place here in the city. It will really uh, not only work in uh, improving and uh, the mindset of a lot of the business community and, and the residents of the city, uh, especially around sustainability, but even to showcase the success stories of uh, companies and uh, even practices in the community around su sustainability. Uh, there are a lot of uh, success stories in the city here that uh, maybe a lot of parts of the world they don't know about. Uh, one of them is uh, Mohammed Bar Rashid Solar Park, the largest standalone solar park uh, in the world. And uh, uh, when it comes to government and some of the private sectors, a lot of entities, they already have a net zero strategy. So I think uh, having COP28 really will showcase what Dubai, UAE, and the region is doing towards sustainability. I think uh, there is a global... Uh, misconception that uh, due to the uh, rich fossil fuel that we have in the region, they think that we don't have a lot of efforts in terms of uh, sustainability, but actually it's the other way around. Uh, we noticed growth in, in this area uh, on Dubai level and the UAE. In Dubai, as I mentioned uh, a while ago about the uh, solar park and in, on Abu Dhabi we have Masdar, so there are a lot of good and successful examples that really uh, you know, show the successful uh, steps that the UAE took towards sustainability. Yeah, absolutely, and a, a lot of amazing successful stories to share with the world. The UAE hosting COP28 is not a coincidence, I would say, and it's a, it sends a clear signal and, and marks a, a, a significant step towards a greener economy. So if we look ahead of COP28, how do you foresee the future of business in the UAE? In general, the future of business, uh, uh, without looking at sustainability, I think it will continue growing, similar to the growth that we witnessed in the region. And the last uh, two years, we witnessed growth uh, of an average higher than pre-COVID, which is very uh, interesting. And I think... Uh, Adding to it the uh, really the shift that some businesses are doing here by combining sustainability and growth. So we noticed that lots of companies, yes, they're moving towards sustainability and net zero, but still they're making more 
revenue and profit, which is can be a bit of a difficult balance. So usually the the, the global mindset or around sustainability is that you know the costs are higher, and uh, you know it takes a lot of time to really get the return on investment. But there are a lot of good and successful examples that happen in the regions. That how can we? build the business case around sustainability because I don't think sustainability should be only limited to we should do this for for the uh, better good of the community or the environment. This is important, but to be able to sustain the economic growth, to be able to create jobs for people, and I think this is the balance that always should continue, uh, is how can we make sustainability drive us toward better productivity and better efficiency. One good example around that is uh, the circular economy. The circular economy, uh, it started by by maybe a global move around uh, how can we, uh, you know, less pollute the the world but i think it moved to a degree that how can we be more efficient in our manufacturing and and uh, you know uh, reusing some of the raw material which eventually uh, with economies of scale made the production cheaper so i think it's very important to really combine uh, having the business case around efficiency and productivity with the sustainability uh, even if this will take a bit of a uh, more, uh, I can say, extended uh, targets, but at the end of the day, this is what's sustainable because we need really to make it sustainable so it can make sense for communities and businesses. Yeah, absolutely. And what's the role of Dubai Chambers in in this transformation of the economy? Uh, Dubai Chamber... uh, does a lot of activities around sustainability. Uh, we have Center for Responsible Business that been running, running for more than a decade. Uh, the main idea of the center is really introduce responsible practices to businesses. Majority of the practices are around sustainability. Uh, we have a, a, an annual uh, gathering over a week is called sustainable week Uh, uh, sustainability week is all about increasing the awareness uh, among the private sector uh, of the importance of sustainability we have a lot of ceos coming in and sharing their best practices around this a second thing is uh, the esg label we introduced a label that really uh, um, accredit and uh, appreciate efforts done by companies around implementing uh, either environmental or social or governance systems that a big part of it is around sustainability too so there there were several uh, examples but the the last uh, not least is the road to cop 28 uh, we had a, um, a very interesting gathering more than 720 people attended a an event uh, that uh, the main purpose of it was really to check the interest of uh, the businesses uh, in COP28, how, how would they participate. And we had a, we had a full house, uh, more than 720 people part- participating in this, mm-hmm. and they requested for more rounds of, of gatherings. And I think uh, during this year in COP, we will see uh, a good number of local companies really showcasing some of their innovation around sustainability uh, and to be very specific on how to use the the uh, nature here coming from the sun and solar energy and uh, maybe the scarcity, uh, scarcity of uh, some of the raw material uh, and uh, converting the circular economy into enhancing the uh, production and efficiency of manufacturing. Yeah, and I must say that I attended some of the events Dubai Chambers organized, and it was really insightful and very informative for, for businesses. Um, in, in the road you know, to COP28, as, as you mentioned, how do you see businesses being involved, or what kind of role can they play at COP28? I think one of the most important things is really sharing the, the, the best practices, the opportunities, and the challenges. I think um, COP28 is a platform for people to look at best practices, to share uh, uh, knowledge and uh, to showcase to some of the other 
companies or other governments participating here, what companies can play a role here. And, and what's more important than this is, and it's very interesting when we see a group of companies who usually they are competing and when it comes to business but for the for the good of sustainability or or you know the environment you see them they club forces really to improve a policy or, or really to uh, uh, help in improving the productivity or even the uh, the good uh, things happening in the community and I think this is this is what's uh, really interesting is that this is a platform to really engage with the, all stakeholders starting from government private sector and uh, citizens uh, around the world uh, on the good side of what business community can bring and, and I think uh, uh, lots of the not only products product services and even uh, jobs that are created are done by uh, the private sector. So I think it's it's an excellent opportunity to show the good steps taken by businesses and how this can really help the uh, communities and the environment. Yeah, absolutely, and inspire others to follow as well this, yes. uh, this transformation. Yes. Um, what's going to be the role of Dubai Chambers at, at COP28? One of our main ro ro roles in the 28, COP28 is really to uh, try to enhance the engagement uh, between private sector and all stakeholders. And the second thing is really to take uh, some of the best practices that we will see during COP28 and work with our stakeholders from the government on improving policies around, around that in the world. Uh, majority of our concentration will be around policies related to business community due to our nature as a Chamber of Commerce. But we always try to com combine the, uh, the, the benefits of business sectors in addition to how can we improve policies to ensure growth in, uh, in the business community in addition to uh, scoring better uh, results and the uh, sustainability overall. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to have another conversation after COP to see you know, what's, what's going to happen. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> so we are nearing the end of, of this conversation. So I really want to ask you, do you have like a message or a call to action to, uh, to our listeners to inspire them to be actively involved in uh, shaping a sustainable future in the UAE? I think uh, sustainability might sound complicated, but I think it's, it can be as simple as just being responsible. So, you know, how can we be responsible toward the environment? How can we be responsible toward others? How can we be responsible toward all of the materials that we're using around us? So it, it is really a, a mindset shift. So we really should make it very simple and easy to digest to people. Uh, it's not necessary uh, the case that always if I want to, uh, you know, support sustainability that I have to end up buying very expensive items. And I think this falls as a responsibility on businesses. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, yes, people would like to support sustainable uh, products, but we should find a way in increasing the efficiency and uh, have the sustainable products compete to a certain degree with prices and sustainable offering. Because um, one of the two challenges that always sustainable product will have is prices are more expensive significantly in some of the cases, and the supply chain is not always sustainable. Mm -hmm. So you might have seasonal products. And I think this is very important for people. And I'm, I'm sure with a lot of awareness, if people see almost similar prices, not necessarily uh, equal, people will move toward the sustainable uh, products. But we really put need, as business community, to really use a lot of innovation. Yeah. I think the only way around this is really to introduce innovation and technology more in the manufacturing of sustainable products, to be able to compete on uh, sustainable supply chains of products and pricing. Absolutely. I think you shared with us very important messages around shifting the mindset and, and innovating and, and the research. So um, are you going to attend COP28? Of course. Yeah? 
Yeah, well, it will be a very interesting two weeks, and we hope that uh, uh, majority of businesses and even residents of Dubai to go and visit and to really see what are the new trends around sustainability. Yeah, thank you so much for your time. That was a very insightful conversation. Thank you. It was an honor to have Mr. Mohammed Ali Rashid Luta on the Let's Turn the Tide podcast for this special series, Voices of COP. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Veolia Near and Middle East, and search for Let's Turn the Tide on your favorite podcast platform. And stay tuned for our upcoming episodes.